Hey, welcome everyone. Today we're going to be cleared for takeoff. I'm Corinne Hoisington, the lead VR trainer at Bytespeed, and I'm also a professor at Central Virginia Community College. But with me today, I'm not only, well, your pilot for Microsoft's VR flight simulator, well, we also have some, there are three pilots on today's flight. Hey, Josh, would you introduce yourself real quick? Sure, thanks, Corinne. Uh, my name is Josh Knutson. I'm the eSports and VR Solutions Director here at Bytespeed. Uh, I've been with the company for about three years now. Uh, I help run the uh, kind of gravity gaming brand and department and work really closely with Corinne and uh, to help kind of deploy uh, successful hardware into, into our partner schools and uh, really excited to be here today. And my other pilot, Henry, would you mind introducing yourself? Yep, um, I'm Henry Burke. I'm the esports and VR solutions administrator at uh, uh, Bytespeed. Um, I'm on the technical side, so product testing with VR and making sure everything works together with the flight simulator and all the peripherals and everything else and making sure that you guys end up with a smooth experience. So. Absolutely. Well, like any takeoff, I understand we're cleared for takeoff. So let's real quick get our plane up in the sky. <laughs> I like a good theme. <laughs> I'm also an author of technology books. And since we're talking about Microsoft, I am a certified trainer for Microsoft as well. And what I love to always talk about, but we'll just send briefly, is I'm the mother of six, uh, grandma of eight, never a dull moment, and a lot of flying in my world. So we all know that about half of all licensed pilots are within 15 years of retirement. And if you watch the news, I'm sure everyone knows this, they've been canceling flights all summer long because they don't have enough pilots right now and flight attendants and even ground crew. So it's really become quite a challenge. So today we're gonna kind of take a look at Microsoft's VR flight simulator but we also kind of want to take a look at VR period. So to kind of share with you what's happening with this particular app, but we'll mention some others as well. So you get the big picture of things if you would. Now, I love flying. Well, I don't fly myself. <laughs> I've flown a lot though, 2.6 million miles just on Delta. But I always sit in the back of the plane. I'm ready though, maybe to uh, be that true pilot and maybe Flight Simulator can all get us there. So Microsoft came out with a Flight Simulator for the Xbox and some of the gaming systems that are out there. So we were first talking on screen, but now they've made the leap into virtual reality, the metaverse, uh, any of the terms that you wanna use. And it really is not just an app or a game, you're actually having experience flying unique different types of planes. I mean, you can actually fly a Boeing, a Super Hornet, um, a Cub Crafters, MX Cub, an Aviat, a Cessna. I mean, you can actually learn with the flight controls right in front of you. And while you're flying around, it's not only an amazing experience, can you imagine the view? And we're gonna do exactly that. So how can you earn your wings in this virtual reality world? So you can actually fly all kinds of different aircraft within the app. Even if you know a career technical education program in your school system that teaches anything with aviation, one of the real problems that they have is actually the simulators to get their hands on one and to also simulate the different type of aircraft. Um, I recently got to go to a school in Oklahoma and right in Oklahoma City Schools, they actually have an old 717, a little 717, the entire aircraft. But as you could obviously see, the odds of us being able to literally get on these commercial jets to practice with comprehensive flight models or even smaller planes to get those accurate cockpits 
And this has all those different flight simulations within it. Uh, whether you're just a beginner and want to kind of see what the capabilities are, are you, and, you know, heading to that professional level, you have a full um, manual with assistive, interactive, highlighted instrumental guidance. So it's not just the panel that you would have in front of you with the instrumentation, you get overlays, you know what to do and how to go through the checklist before any flight. And you can test your skills in any different situation. Well, you know, weather. The weather this summer has been brutal in a lot of areas. We're not only talking flight cancellations because we can't find enough pilots. We also have had some brutal weather, whether it be thunderstorms or in the dead of winter in Fargo. So this can actually switch on the live weather mode to experience different real-time weather situations, different wind speeds, directions, temperature, humidity, rain, and no visibility. So uh, there's a big difference between landing, what they call with visibility or no vis, as they would say. Hey, there's even a day and night feature. So that way you can experience flight any time or day of the year. And there's all kinds of aerodynamic modeling. They actually have a state-of-art physics engine with over a thousand control surfaces per plane to kind of really give you that truly realistic experience. So now I know what you're thinking. Ah, it would be cool to see it. Well, let's do that. So first, let me take you to the website so you can kind of get a little experience here of what exactly we're talking about. But look at that view. You're starting to get the idea and the appeal. So let me pop into the website and I'll let you know what that is. It's www.flightsimulator.com. This product is made by Microsoft. So they do a great job of it. And we're going to talk price and equipment and everything in just a moment. So the flight simulator can take you over different places throughout the planet. And look at the different planes that are available, the different conditions that are here. And it's not just in Colorado or Florida or Arkansas. At, at the end of our tour today, we're actually gonna go international. So this gives you all kinds of great experiences. Even if you're not a flight instructor or CTE teacher, wouldn't this be great in a class like history or geography to take a flight and to go see these exact things? There's another app that's somewhat similar to this, but it doesn't have the flying component. And I bet you know of it, it's called Google. And they have Google Earth in VR that you can walk along at street level or zoom from a satellite image. Well, this is quite different. Being able to take the flight in these different locations. And just want you to know, later if you have some questions, uh, they have some great video collections, aircraft manuals on the site, even some great FAQs uh, to kind of figure out exactly how this would work in more detail than we have time for today. So let's start with a big picture view. You know, you're going to do more with, let's say, a aviation program than just flight simulator, but boy, it would be a great way to get students excited to be a part of this program or to see if this is a good fit for them at all. Or if we're talking about anything in almost any grade level class, a lot of our students only spend, well, most of their lives in a small area. Most children haven't seen maybe more than 100 miles past their neck of the woods. So to really get them exposed to this beautiful world around us could be pretty exciting. So I thought we would take our first flight together if you don't mind. This gentleman right here is going to assist us in showing what the VR will look like. Let's jump in here in just a second and let's see first, how good is the detail here?
they're not excited about being a pilot yet, I bet just watching that was like, now that looks pretty cool. What we're seeing in this flight simulator is the taking off, the landing, all the different procedures, all the different items that you experience. Well, let's kind of now go and see a little bit deeper what we're talking about. Flight is not just commercial, it can also be military. seeing here is the newest version that just came out. It's actually called the Top Gun Microsoft Flight Simulator. And what you're seeing here is landing on an aircraft carrier. Do you see the wire? And you don't want to miss that wire. The sky is calling, is it not? Hey, Josh, any questions so far? Uh, nope, looks good, but that's a great point, Corinne. Uh, for any of you that are in attendance with us today, please feel free to drop any comments or questions that you have in the Q&A or the chat. And if you're watching this on YouTube, please drop those in the comments below. Sounds great. So let me give you a little background and we'll dive back into the flight simulator. You're probably hearing a new term out there. I know it's really exploded over the past year, the term metaverse. So what is this metaverse and what exactly are we talking about? Equipment wise, school wise, how could education use it? Well, I want you to imagine you've walked into an art museum and you know, instead of just staring at the beautiful paintings on the wall, Let's see how the metaverse would be a tad more inviting. Instead of just walking around and seeing things, how about if they suddenly This is the dimension of imagination. They suddenly came alive. So is that possible now? And what is this all about? Well, the metaverse is just a word that means a broad shift in how we interact with technology. Uh, we've all used words like internet 2.0, 3.0. Many people call the metaverse the future of the internet. It's where we immerse more in the experience. Instead of watching something on a flat screen, we can interact with it around us. Instead of just watching a YouTube movie, we can actually be a part of it. So let's take a look at what this immersive experience, you're not just looking down, you're flying the plane. Let's listen and watch. Hey, and here, here. So welcome. I'm gonna turn him off for a moment and kind of show you his experience. And I wanna jump in and show you so you would put the headset on in virtual reality and use the flight simulator. We're gonna let you know which headsets we'd recommend, all those pieces and parts in just a bit. But you're seeing the controls, you're driving the controls, 
everything is capable here. Are you noticing instead of just using the built in um, hand controllers, there are different add ons that we can use uh, with the virtual reality environment. But most importantly, you're seeing the cockpit, you're controlling all of those numbers. And how are you, you know, what the weather is, but the view is beautiful as well. And as this flies around here, as you can kind of see, you're seeing measurements like south by southwest, <laughs> northwest, and so forth here, what your altitude is at any moment, uh, uh, your flap location, whether they're up or down, every little detail. In fact, let's kind of see what you'd see on the control in front of you right here to kind of see it more closely. So by learning this, students get a great idea of the experience. I think he's upside, upside down at the moment, but it really gives them some excitement. And by the way, We've seen a lot of people use different methodologies during this. Of course, you could be seated, you could be standing. Um, there's actually uh, some of this during flight control practice, they actually will put them on a simulator that makes them feel it, the um, different winds and the turbulence as well. So this is a fan right here. This is actually now we're not recommending all of this, but I want to show you how uh, detailed this can actually be in the virtual reality experience. We're seeing add ons to this as well. For example, Top Gun, different countries, different add ons all the time to kind of give students different experiences. And for example, here is the Tom Cruise official Microsoft Flight Simulator, um, you know, showing what they're now adding on to these experiences. And if you just saw the movie, well, you better hurry and get into Flight Simulator. So let's get to some of the details. How much, where do you find this? There are two ways to get the VR Flight Simulator app at this time. There'll probably be more before it's all done. The most norm way to get most VR apps is through Steam. And I'll head to that website in just a little bit. The Steam Microsoft Flight Simulator Game of the Year, by the way, uh, it actually won that award is $69.99. So let me just show you around where all that is. If you just simply uh, go to Google or Bing, whatever's your preferred, and just type in the word Steam, you'll go to a website called Welcome to Steam at store.steampower.com. Now, not all apps in the VR and metaverse are here, but a lot of them are. So when I click Welcome to Steam, I can see all different kinds of virtual reality experiences. Now, there are at least about, oh, a few thousand going on about 5,000 that are amazing in education today. So everything from elementary, middle, and high school. So if we wanted to locate Flight Simulator, we could do so right here and open the Flight Simulator Game of the Year edition. And you can see rated mostly positive, which is always wonderfully put together here. When you scroll down like any other app, you wanna make sure it works on your device. So the VR support for this particular app works on a variety of headsets that we're about to talk about. Uh, HTC Vive is used a lot in education, but Oculus Rift is great, but the trouble that you run into sometimes with the Oculus side of the house is logging in with Facebook, sometimes a problem in the schools for sure. So we see a lot of schools go with HTC. Boy, Valve Index, I wish. Um, Valve Index, yes, it'll work, but it's very, very high end and very pricey. And this even works on the wide variety of like HP and so forth, the Windows Mixed Reality headsets as well. 
So it would just simply be downloaded to your PC uh, that's running Windows 10, Windows 11 to be able to run this. And this is why this needs that gaming computer uh, that will go along with it here. So once we find it there, um, they have some add-ons. For example, here is a Cessna add-on. Um, it has a lot in there, but some of the add-ons are as cheap as $20. So if you want even more aircraft, more airport simulations, more weather, um, you can discover all kinds of flights in that manner. So let's kind of take it broader as well. So what is our view in education? We see that this is a perfect app that could be used in virtual reality across the board. But what does this look like in the classroom? And we're not sure where you're coming in at today and joining us. Maybe this is your first experience in hearing about virtual reality, or maybe you're looking to upgrade what you have already. Uh, one of, for example, one of the big companies out there has an HTC Vive Cosmos. Here's the headset, the two controllers. And this is connected to a gaming computer like this one right here. It could be a laptop, but here is a full-size computer, which is really great for esports. we'll hear about later. And here's the headset on the left. It doesn't have to be on a cart, but let me explain some of the benefits of this. If you have it on the cart, then everyone can see what everyone is seeing inside the monitor on the large 27 inch screen right here. Uh, if they're just wearing the headset, you have trouble helping them and troubleshooting because you can't see what they're seeing. And of course, you could take an HDMI cord or wirelessly connect this to let's say a smart board in the classroom or any projection system so that the whole class can hear, see, and be a part of that. Now, real quick, Henry, tell us more about what we have at Bytespeed to go along with the different headsets here. Yeah, so um, when it comes to virtual reality um, and uh, flight simulator, the first thing to remember is you don't necessarily need VR for flight simulator. So if, if think of it as like an add-on. So if, if you're here and you're interested in flight simulator and you're also interested in VR, that's great, but you don't have to pair them together. They can be a different package. Um, when it comes to flight simulator, um, the headset that I'm going to be recommending um, is going to be the Vive Focus 3. Um, the Vive Focus 3 is their newest. Um, it's, it's a standalone headset, but you can pair it with a uh, link cable that essentially links it to a PC. Um, the reason I recommend that headset is because um, it has a 5K resolution and 120 degree field of view, which is awesome for when you're in a plane um, you're going to get be able to see you know farther around than you would with typical headsets and get that higher resolution to really take advantage of those awesome graphics um, that are going to come from flight simulator um, also it has what is called inside out tracking um, so it will not require any external sensors um, outside so that way um, if you move it to a different space or anything like that, you don't have to worry about resetting up the sensors or having too many sensors in a room or anything like that. It's um, it's just a simple kind of plug and play solution. Um, it works really well. Um, it uh, so with Flight Simulator, it's it's ideal because you don't really have to worry about anything else. Once you have the headset on, you don't have to worry about the sensors, the tracking. Um, one thing to note is you will not use the controllers. Um, so if you do VR. Um, you won't be using the controllers for the VR headset whatsoever at all. All of your inputs are going to come from either your peripherals, um, your yoke, or your throttle, or whatever you choose to have as peripherals with your system. That's where your inputs are going to be going in. Um, the only thing you're really using the headset for is that 360 degree um, vision. Um, one thing to keep in mind, too, is if you are doing a PC, um, if you decide to go with virtual reality, um, you will need an even more powerful PC than if you don't have, um, if, if you're just doing it on a monitor. Um, that comes because that 5K resolution in the headset needs to be pushed by the computer. So if you're playing on a 1080p monitor, you're not gonna need as much hardware because you're not pushing such a high resolution to the headset. But since the headset's so high end and has such quality resolution, you're gonna need a much higher end PC to push similar performance in that side of things. So um, keep that in mind too, when you're thinking like budgeting or you know what your plan for flight simulator and your setup is, um, 
you're definitely going to have to be on the higher end in general for flight simulator. Um, but when you decide to go to VR, you need to kind of almost go that one step up. Um, I did see a question in here too about a Quest 2. Um, it will work with the Quest 2 as long as it's tethered and you do have the capable PC. Um, it shouldn't be a problem at all. So, right. Yeah, and it's not a standalone app, but it can, yeah, like we said, it's tethered and so forth. Thank you, Henry. That was really helpful. Any other questions while we have Henry around with all the technical aspects? Good. So let me just go over, though, the big picture of what we're seeing happening in education in the classroom with VR, metaverse, flight simulator, and beyond. Um, you know, what we're really seeing is the educational metaverse is a digital world when anything can exist. We can take that flight, we can blend digital items into the physical world, and even have a fully immersive 3D environment. And what we're seeing happening with this is there are now apps that are available in virtual reality in this same setup that could teach almost any topic from history, science, math, um, any of our CTE pathways. Think of it like this. I love this one. So we're going to have an astrophysicist in the family. Actually, I have to write this paper. Will you help me? Let's take a closer look. What part of the solar system are we talking about? Saturn. If you were taking astrophysics, you could study in the metaverse. Did you know the rings are made up of billions of icy particles? Really? Look at this. You're ready to do that paper now, right? Yeah. In the metaverse, You'll be able to teleport not just to any place, but any time as well. Ancient Rome. Imagine standing on the streets, hearing the sounds, visiting the markets, to get a sense of the rhythm of life over 2,000 years ago. Imagine learning how the Forum was built by actually seeing the Forum get built right in front of you. Now, I do see Facebook mentioned here. I do want, uh, there's sometimes a confusion. Um, Meta has been renamed, of course, from the Facebook name, but I also want you to understand that Facebook doesn't own the metaverse nor VR or anything like that. They're one of the many players that are in this landscape, if you would. So now let's kind of see what are some other apps that if you're already going to get the setup, what else can you do? A lot of schools start off with um, one or two computers. And they can use the computer in an esports after school or during school to design apps. We can use it in different CTE pathways or any grade level. We're seeing that this new future of learning is truly immersive. For example, there are companies out there like Victory XR that you can now use these computers, these headsets to teach almost anything. Well, it's almost lunchtime. Let's uh, see what happens inside of our bodies when we have lunch. Now, let's start with the teeth. Everybody uh, look at the teeth on the uh, oral cavity. So now everyone can get their own intestines. Didn't you always want that? <laughs> the teacher could go inside or have a licensed teacher teach inside where every student's in a collaborative space. So it's not just a single experience. If there are multiple headsets involved, um, then everyone in the class can participate no matter what it happens to be. Um, we're even seeing simulations for job career pathways. There is a company out there that I'll mention in a moment that has almost 50 different career paths for example, going into robotics or electrician or nursing or any of these items where a school counselor could share that with their students. And I think flight simulator would be great for aviation. For example, if they're interested in robotics, they could do this. Man, I hate that now is the place I rep. I put my heart and soul into the very death. As I walk, people stare and they're like, 
hottest kid, swag is so tight. Oh my God, I'm a money making machine. Acquired all the time, questions pop up. Where I'm getting that green, they wanna know where I go, what I do, where I'm at. Click clack, recommend you stay back. I'm a crazy made man for you yet to discover. Keep pushing my buttons and I'ma start the show. But the others are so the company that's doing this is called Career Labs VR, and there's just so many new opportunities. At ByteSpeed, we've tried to help us all as educators. I teach in the high school and college level as well. And my experience is found that a lot of times we just kind of need to make it easy. <laughs> so let me show you uh, off of our website. And if you don't mind, Josh, would you put this um, in for everybody? I'm going to the website, uh, ByteSpeed. Hold on, I have to fix something real quick. Uh, bytespeed.com forward slash VR apps here real quick. It is a list, you'll see it in just a moment on my screen, of about uh, a thousand in this space. So let me just pop that up real quick. So at Bytespeed, let me get that web address, make it easier, and Josh is going to put it in there. This is a good starter kit. You know, what are some great STEM apps, CTE apps, ele elementary and middle school, high school and college. And we have a list of these apps where you can open them, see them, see how much they would cost. Some of these apps are free and some of these are paid. Paid apps can vary. For example, we saw that flight simulator was $69.99. That's for a single computer and a single headset that's connected to that computer. It needs all of its power. So for example, um, what we often recommend is training with this as well. We have found that when schools sometimes get the equipment and all of the setups, uh, it's, VR is great, but it takes a little bit of a learning curve. So what we recommend at ByteSpeed is um, myself or one of our trainers will fly out to your school and work with your educators all day long. And we're educators ourselves. We use VR in the classroom. And for example, I have trained at over almost now 250 different schools across the country, helping them getting their VR totally set up with as many teachers who would like to go to the training. And we talk safety, we talk setup, but we talk lesson plans, how to incorporate it into that environment as well. So that's really important to the equation here. And no matter what the class, there is an app, whether it's art or you're trying to just review terms, well, like this, let me show you. How about Pictionary? And that's Tilt Brush for, let's say, $19.99. So no matter what pathway, we're trying to get um, VR in every school. To help you out, though, write down my email address at the bottom of the slide, or even if you're watching the recording, please do. I would love to hand you my Carl Perkins grant. Carl Perkins is a federal grant that works in career paths in middle and high schools and CTE centers. Uh, I've written it to get virtual reality and we can also help you frame it for flight simulator as well. That way you can maybe turn it in to the Carl Perkins grant, which is federally based and anywhere from $30,000 on up based on need of your school system and size. And we are showing you all of this because it's not just about school. Don't forget, the purpose of K through 12 is to get students ready for the after the 12 part, right? So what's happening in virtual reality, metaverse, and even flight simulator in business today? Well, business is starting to get shaken up a little bit. We've seen people move to be remote, and they're starting to use virtual reality. We now know of 40,000 American companies that are using 
VR or any of these simulators for training for working together, let me show you how Facebook hopes that we'll all start working remotely. Listen in. Over the last year and a half, a lot of us who work in offices have gone remote. And while I miss seeing the people I work with, I think remote work is here to stay for a lot of people. So we're gonna need better tools to work together. Let's take a look at what working in the metaverse will be like. Imagine if you could be at the office without the commute. You would still have that sense of presence, shared physical space, those chance interactions that make your day all accessible from anywhere. Now imagine that you have your perfect work setup and you can actually do more than you could in your regular work setup. And on top of all that, you can keep wearing your favorite sweatpants. Looking good. Let's get together real quick for a debrief. I'm free now. Let's jump in. Hi. Hey. So what do we think? I think it's ready. Great. I'll prep it for the presentation. All right, good luck. Imagine a space where you can tune out distractions and focus on the task at hand. And when you're ready to share what you've been working on, you can present it as if you're right there with the team. Pretty crazy. So we're getting students ready for what's next. To me, I'm convinced that virtual reality and all of this is not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. We're seeing school textbook companies like Pearson and Cengage and all of these companies actually starting to make virtual reality apps with their textbook to teach their topics. So this is something that speaks to the language that our students all adore. It's technology. They want to be a part of it. They want to get immersed. They don't want to only be lectured to, if you would. Most recently, we saw something that really took our culture, our world around us, and brought it into both gaming and virtual reality. I think everyone's probably heard of a game called Fortnite. Well, in March, Time Magazine aligned with Fortnite to celebrate MLK's, well, birthday <laughs> and the famous speech. Watch it if you would. It would be fatal for the nation to overlook the urgency of the moment. Now is the time to rise from the dark and desolate valley of segregation let freedom ring from every hill and mole hill of Mississippi, from every mountainside. So to actually be in virtual reality, to be at that speech, how simply amazing that we can go to any moment of history. But back where we started, you know, nowadays we can be anywhere with things like flight simulator, whether you're using it in the Xbox, or you're using it in virtual reality. Most recently, they updated a world update. And in fact, this is in Spain, Portugal, and Gibraltar, and a little tiny country within Spain called Andorra. Can you imagine showing the students the world while teaching them to fly? The sky truly is calling. Ready for a vacation?
a work of art to take the beautiful country that's around us and the world around us and use it to teach students to fly aviation. They can buy additional um, controls to use in this environment. But you see, well, would I use this and a very expensive simulator in my aviation program? I think the answer is yes. I think the more experience students can get, any pilot will tell you, as I was researching this topic and playing the app quite a bit, I asked a pilot friend, I said, what do you think of all of this? And he said, you know, it's really more real than you can imagine it is. And it really gives them that experience. It's really hard, a lot of our aviation programs, if they even have a flight simulator, the time and the hours to get on it, where as we have multiple headsets in a classroom or a classroom lab, now everyone can have that experience, learn to fly different places or learn any topic that we're teaching them within the classroom. So did everybody pick out a location that you hope to fly to soon? From Spain, Portugal, all over the US and so many additions being added on. So it's really a game changer in everything that we do. Uh, Josh, you know, I'd love to bring you back in. I want everyone to understand those high-end computers that we've been showing and talking about that are running these apps, whether you're using it on a flat screen or in virtual reality, uh, have another purpose. We're gonna call this a twofer. Josh, will you explain? Yeah, I, exactly like Karen mentioned, I, I think one really important thing, especially when we're talking about an educational environment, is how do I make my dollars go farther, right? How do I maximize a purchase? We're talking about a high-end machine, a lot of different uh, extra materials that you can grab onto it. Um, so you want that, that equipment to do more than just flight simulator, right? So uh, the important thing to remember is that eSports is another activity out there that, that these machines would be perfect for. Uh, whether you're getting kind of that, um, you know, entry level flight simulator kind of mid level computer uh, to where you're you're just kind of focused on flight sim and not necessarily the VR side of things, or you're going with the, the super high end model where you're putting the headset on, you have all the other peripherals and stuff and you're working with that really high end computer that Henry talked about earlier. Um, those machines are going to be great for not only esports, but other stuff that you're already doing in your classrooms, um, CTE, Adobe, um, engineering stuff, project lead the way. Uh, there's a lot of different applications and use cases that a high-end device like this will, will be perfect for. Um, so as you're kind of thinking about flight simulator as a whole, and you're, you're worried about that expense or that possible, you know, how, how do I maximize this purchase? Um, you know, remember that, at the end of the day, it's it's a high-end computer, so there's a lot of different applications that you can use. Um, Flight Simulator right now doesn't have like a true eSport model in it, but there are some pretty cool challenges and uh, ways that you can kind of work in a multiplier environment. So maybe maybe one day there will be a Flight Sim eSport out there, uh, but for right now, there's you know there's stuff like landing challenges and time trials and things like that that you can really get into. Uh, you know, those students that really grasp flight sim as an application and want to kind of stretch those competitive muscles, um, you know, they can get that kind of an experience. Uh, Jim put a, a really great uh, comment in the chat here, too, that there is VR drone racing uh, out there right, as another application, which would be, uh, you know, super cool uh, and another um, another good use case for all of the equipment that you would use for flight simulator. So, um the skills and the, the experiences that your students can have through extracurriculars and, and extra technology and, and the doors that it opens is, is far reaching. Uh, and we just wanted to make a, a really quick point here that esports and, and competitive gaming can go alongside uh, this really cool educational tool uh, that we have in, in a flight simulator rig. So um, if you have questions about kind of that side of things, you know, definitely reach out. Uh, we just, Wanted to, to briefly mention it here at the end of the presentation. Absolutely, thank you, Josh. And you know, let's use the equipment as much as possible. If you're gonna invest into a high-end computer of any type, you wanna use it every hour of every day that we possibly can. After school, during school, uh, there's esports, comp competitive clubs at almost 
uh, every college and university and definitely in the high school space. So it's so exciting to see all of that. And like that question just showed, and I'll close with this, when you do go to STEAM, let me hide this real quick and put this out here to hide that. There we go. When you do go to STEAM, you're gonna notice if you type anything with aviation or flights uh, in this experience here, let me head to that. There are drones, there's multiples, it's not just. Um, so you'll see if I just type in the word flight here, there's so many different experiences, um, even a little bit of Star Wars, you could fit that in, right? So, and let's go to drone right here to show you the drone wars. And um, there's uh, drone racing right here. I think I just had it, there we go. The um, FBB drone racing, $19.99. Uh, so pretty exciting for them to get all of those different experiences within that environment there. So we'll just show a little bit of this. Any last questions, Josh, that people are having today? or comments? Nope, I, I don't think so. I, if anybody is still in the chat here, please feel free to dump those questions in. Now's a great time to do kind of like a real quick Q&A. Uh, so if there's something that you're curious about, please let us know before we wrap up. Good, and if you're watching this YouTube later on, feel free to reach out to us at Fight Speed. We'll be happy to answer any of your questions and really walk you step-by-step step through the process and have people that really believe strongly in gaming and high-end uh, activities for the classroom like this. I think it's really taking things up a notch. Uh, we need pilots so badly, and this was really the reason for doing this, so that we can you know, in, have new ways to attract students to these amazing career paths. Uh, drone pilots as well, pretty cool. So thanks for throwing this one in. I love this one as well. Uh, I want to thank you, Henry, Josh, and everybody that joined us live today or joined us on YouTube. Uh, please contact us and uh, at Bytespeed. Our website is bytespeed.com, and we look forward to um, making a difference in your classroom. Take care, everyone. Thanks, everyone.